Welcome to Cat and Jess Talk the Best, where we're going to be talking about IMDb's top 250 movies from April 12th, 2018. My name is Kat. And I'm Jess. And today we are starting our Christmas episodes. So we've got four of them. First one is Elf, and then Gremlins, and then Miracle on 34th Street, and then How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So without further ado, we are doing Elf first, which is a comedy family fantasy film from 2003. This has a 6.9 on 178,254 votes. <laughs> it changed. Since last night. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, the spoiler-free synopsis. Buddy was accidentally transported to the North Pole as a toddler and raised to be raised to adulthood among Santa's elves. Unable to shake the feeling that he doesn't fit in, the adult Buddy travels to New York in full elf uniform, in search of his real father. As it happens, this is Walter Hobbs, a cynical businessman. After a DNA test proves this, Walter reluctantly attempts to start a relationship with the childlike buddy with increasingly chaotic results. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> by, directed by John Favreau? I don't know. That's some guessing. Like that. I apologize if I mess up your name. <laughs> and he's done, he directed... The first two Iron Mans and Cowboys and Aliens. Hmm. The stars Will Ferrell, Ugh, Will Ferrell, <laughs> James Caan, and Zoe Deschanel. But I, I like her. She's she does good in this, and she does good in the other stuff she's been in. And it's really funny when you see both of them on the screen together. It's really good. <laughs> it's entertaining. So, um, the Rotten Tomatoes. The average rating is a seven. It has an eight point or an eighty three on one hundred and ninety one critical reviews, so it is fresh. Um, so the fresh reviews were one hundred and fifty nine. Rotten reviews were thirty two. Wow. Let's see if I have it on here, and it has a sixty four on Metacritic. It's kind of a yeah. lower Metacritic there. Yeah, a little bit lower. Uh, so two of the fresh: David Anson, Farrell is a hoot. So much, so is much of the witty holiday family entertainment, which, up until the end, when the true spirit of Christmas must be reaffirmed, happily favors slapstick over terrible. Okay. I don't know what terrible is. But okay. <laughs> um, Christy Lemire. Sure, Elf feels a little too feel good at the end, but what do you expect? It's a Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else would be the cinematic equi equivalent of finding coal in your stocking. Ha! Nice. <laughs> That's funny. Um, too Rotten. Scott Tobias. The cast rings laughs out of David Berenbaum's script as if it were a damp washcloth. But even they have trouble selling fr frenetic button-pushing as... The Christmas spirit. Wow. That's harsh. That was really harsh. Oh, man. This person obviously does not like this film at no. all. Oh, good lord. Goodness. Alright, J.R. Jones. The film soon bogs down in fake hugs and a fakier climax involving Santa and his downed sled. Wow. They're harsh. Yeah. Goodness. Okay, so the consensus. A movie full of yuletide cheer, Elf is a spirited, good-natured family comedy, and it benefits greatly from Will Ferrell's funny and charming performance as one of Santa's biggest helpers. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good consensus. Yeah, I do too. So, the budget. The budget was $33 million. In the U.S., it made $173,398,518, which that is going to be going going up from the time that we record it, because it actually is in theaters while we're recording. Oh, yeah. You did tell me that. Yeah, it's in theaters for, I think, a total of five days. And It's a good movie to show right now. Yeah, we're recording it at the beginning of December, so... It's still... it's They put it back in theaters for five days, so that, that money will go up a little bit. Um, so the international was forty seven million forty four thousand nine hundred thirty three for a total of two hundred and twenty million 
$443,451. It almost made ten times the amount of its budget. Nice. <laughs> almost. It was just a little bit under. $110 million under. So the opening weekend, it made $31,113,501. So it almost made back its budget. Almost, yeah. And it opened in 3,337 theaters, ran for 119 days, which is a total of 17 weeks. Wow. And that's not including the five days it's running now. Uh, the all-time domestic rank is number 270, and its highest all-time rank is number 80, which it achieved close to the end of its run in theaters, um, February 12th, 2004. And it has won two awards. The ASCAP Film and Television Music Awards, it won Top Box Office. And Golden Trailer, it won, because it's trailer, it won Best Comedy. Yes. So, initial thoughts. <sighs> okay, so this, this is one of my films I picked, so <laughs> I love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember when I watched it for the first time. I honestly don't remember. But I have loved this movie ever since I've watched it. And it just, just makes you feel good. It's a good laugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, I think I, I didn't watch it in theaters. I know that. I watched it no, probably when it came out on DVD. But I enjoy it a lot. It's really funny. Um, it's not my favorite. Not one of my favorites. But I do watch it pretty much every Christmas. While every December... <laughs> Cause it's just it's a it's a good one, and it's one of the few comedies and one of the few Will Ferrell movies that I actually like. So it's very quotable. That's all I gotta give it. That yeah, it, that's true. It's <laughs> <laughs> like I can quote this movie all year round. Yeah, that's true. Um, all right. So I think that's all we got. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah! Ah! That was your warning. If you haven't watched the film yet, make sure you go watch it and come back after you've done that. So, start off with like a book. Yes, like a storybook. Yeah, and an old elf is telling the story. Yes, Papa Elf. Yes, Papa Elf. It's talking about how there's different jobs that elves do. Like, you can make shoes, like being a cobbler. Mm, you um, can bake cookies. <laughs> in a tree. In a tree. Which is kind of dangerous. The Keebler elves, you know. Without <laughs> without specifically mentioning them. <laughs> yeah, it's like just certain elves that cook, bake cookies and And it's funny, one of them, they show, they like, they're showing the jobs and stuff, and one of them in the tree, he like runs out, and he's like, I want to make toys! <laughs> <laughs> and that's the third job an elf can do, is building toys in Santa's shop, which is like what every elf wants to do. Yeah, it's like the prestigious job. And, um, then you jump to, he's kind of telling the story of Buddy. Your buddy came to the North Pole. Yep. He was in an orphanage. And he was a mischievous <laughs> little child and climbed into Santa's sack. Well, he sees a cute little teddy bear. I mean, what's a little kid gonna do? What I'm wondering is how he got out of that crib. Because, well, it's like, it shows him, like, in his crib. And then you see the crib bars go down. Yeah, but, I mean, that's a long <coughs> drop for a baby. <laughs> I'm just saying. It is. Well, <laughs> it is. I'll give it that. Um, so, they end up back at Santa's workshop with Buddy, and he, uh, well, Buddy's not his name yet, but he crawls out of the sack, Santa's big um, sack, and... They're like, what is that? It's a baby. What's his name? And they read his diaper, and it's like some Little buddy, buddy diapers. Yeah, little buddy diapers. And they're like, his name's Buddy. It's like, perfect, you named the kid. <laughs> and uh, so they give them, to, give them to Papa Elf, because Papa Elf always wanted a kid. But he's been too busy to, yeah. you know, get too around busy, to that. Too busy uh, helping Santa. I mean, that's a bit too much work <laughs> for me. But. It's, yeah, then you see how um, Buddy grows up. 
yeah. being human in the elf world. Yeah. <laughs> That's real funny because it's all like this miniature stuff. And Will, Will Ferrell is not a small guy. No, he's like 6'2". Six he's six a three. big guy. So it's made, e- it looks even smaller because of how big he is. Like, I feel like if me or you had done this, it would have still felt small. But it looked like he was a giant in this world. Yeah. Because of how tall he is. Yeah, he's 6'3". I just looked it up. Okay. But, um, so he's starting to not fit in because he knows that he's not good at making toys. And then everybody comes up with things that he's good at because he's feeling bad about himself. Yeah. Like, and, uh, and he's... You're the only one that can reach the top of the tree to put the star on. <laughs> and you drop the choir, elf choir a whole octave. Yeah. But in a good way. <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> and then, um, so he gets sent to... Where the not so good elves that make toys go to toy testing. Yes. Yeah. Toy testing. Stuff in these little jack in the boxes. <laughs> and then he kind of overhears a couple elves talking, and he finds out that he's human. Yeah, he didn't know he was not an elf. He just thought he was a really big elf. <laughs> he just thought, yeah. He's like, oh, okay, that probably does make sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So he goes and asks Papa Elf about his parents. And, and he like, tells him, um, yeah, uh, Papa Elf tells Buddy how his parents, they fell in love, because they, they were young. Yeah. They fell in love, um, and then uh, Buddy's mom had him, but his dad didn't know about yeah. it, and she put him up for adoption, and then she died. Yeah. And then, um, so he decides he's gonna go find his dad, so he goes to Santa. Santa tells him he's in New York. But he also tells him that he's on the naughty list. And that, like, freaks Buddy out. Destroys his world. He's like, no! So then he's going through the candy cane forest. Yep. (laughs) He tells it multiple times throughout the movie of how he got to New York. Candy cane forest and all. The gumdrop something. It's this whole thing. Yeah. It's funny, because one part is, there's a raccoon. He gets to New York, and he sees a raccoon, and he wants to give it a hug. The raccoon does not want a hug. No hugs. Um, but so he gets to New York, and he's got no clue what's going on. Utterly confused. <laughs> it's real funny. He's, like, walking around, and there's these guys handing out flyers, and he keeps taking, thank you! Thank you. Thank you. And he just keeps walking by, and then eventually they're like, oh, no, get out of here. Give me those flyers back. <laughs> yeah, and he's, like, going around, like, going through, like, the spinning doors, mm-hmm. having fun with that, eating gum off the street, even yeah. though Santa told him not to do that. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> and, um, then he finally gets to the Empire State Building where his dad works. Yes. And he gets up there. He gets in the elevator first. And the guy in there pushes the button, and he gets so excited. So he pushes all the buttons. All the buttons. He's like, it's like a Christmas tree. <laughs> and he's so excited. <laughs> and uh, then he gets, it's like halfway up. And he's like, sorry, I can't ride with you the rest of the way. <laughs> he's like, my dad works on this floor. And they've literally stopped at every single floor. Every single one. And I'm surprised this guy just didn't get out and walk up the stairs. Yeah. Or get out and go to another elevator. (laughs) But, so, um, he gets up there to his dad's floor, and he goes and talks to the lady, and she thinks he's a Christmas Graham. Yep. Which is just, like, a person who comes and sings your Christmas song to cheer you up, I guess. I guess. I don't really know. I've never had one. Nope. I mean, I've had a Christmas cookie. Graham cracker cookie, but, I mean, not a Christmas Graham. It's two (laughs) completely different things. The puns. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, the puns. That Um, just happened. (laughs) So he gets in there and he's like telling his dad and his dad's like, you need to sing a song. And he's like, I'm singing a song about my dad. And it's like the worst song I've ever heard in my life. Just makes it up as he's going on. He's, like, trying to tell him, you know, he's like, I'm your son, Yeah. and Susan Wells had me, and you didn't know. And then he gets thrown out, because yeah. he said that. And then he gets hit by a taxi. 
Because he's trying to hop across the crosswalk. He thinks he needs to hop on the... The white which, parts of I it. I mean, that makes sense see. because kids... I did that when I was little. I did too. I would hop on the white parts. Um, he still doesn't get in New York. He still doesn't understand. But no. the security guards, as they throw him out, they tell him to go back to Gimbal's. Because they go to Gimbal's. Yeah. <laughs> which is a... Um, it's like a big department store in New York. It's like Macy's and Kohl's and Sears, all those. And he go, he finds, he's like walking around in the, in the, um, in the lingerie section. <laughs> it's like a special gift for a special someone. Yeah. He's like, huh. So he's like looking at it and <laughs> we come back to that later. And then he's like also walking around the department store and there's this lady this perfume. With perfume, and she tells him it's some berry flavor or something, and he's like, "Ooh!" And she he sprays it in his mouth, and he just looks like starts gagging. He's like, ah. "He's like, ah, that's not good." <laughs> <laughs> and then the manager sees him, and he's like, "What are you doing down here?" He's like, "Come on, you gotta go up." So he takes him to the toy store where all these other workers are. The North Pole. They're dressed up as like elves and all that. And he tells him that this isn't. They argue about it being the real North Pole. He's like, "No, it's not. Is it? Is. No, it's not. Is it? Is. No, it's not." <laughs> and they argue about it and all that. And then he meets Jovi. Yay, Jovi! Which is Emily Deschanel's character. Uh, whose character? Zoe's. 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 Damn it. <laughs> Zoe's character. Zoe Deschanel's character. See? <laughs> See, you can't do it. I got you. Focus. We got this. Um, she thinks he's kind of weird and charming at the same time. That's Will Ferrell for you, I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> he was just his whole personality. Um, but, so then the manager announces that Santa is coming. Santa's coming. And he's so excited. He's like, I know him! <laughs> and they're all just like, uh-huh. Like, okay. And so it's closing time. And <laughs> He doesn't really have anywhere to go. No. So he stays at the store and gets it ready for Santa. Yeah, he decorates it and everything. Yeah. And then you jump to his dad. And his dad is ha like, the dinner time at his dad's uh, apartment. So he's having dinner with his son and his um, wife. And then he goes into his office because he has all kinds of work to do. But he starts looking at... An old yearbook. Yeah. And it's got a picture of him and... His, um, buddy's mom. Susan. Yeah, Susan. I forget her name because she's not actually in it. No. Um, and then it jumps back to Buddy. Well, kind of. So there's singing in the department store and Buddy hears it. And mm -hmm. he loves Christmas. <laughs> so he goes He's towards known. the singing without really knowing that he should not be going towards the singing. <laughs> He doesn't know. He just hears, like, this really nice singing. Yeah. So he goes into the bathroom, locker room, Yeah, whatever, the woman's locker room. To find the singing, find the person singing. And he's just sitting on the counter, and he's just very lightly singing to where he can't hear her. She mm -hmm. can't hear him at first. <laughs> yeah, because it's Jovi. She's singing in the shower. Yeah. She's singing, baby, it's cold outside. Uh-huh. So <laughs> then it, it gets to, like... A big part in the song, and he just sings so loud, and she's like, she's "What?" Like, <laughs> she sticks her head out and is like, "What are you doing here?" Just chews him out, and he's yes. like, runs away. <laughs> and then um, you see Buddy sleeping in. Uh, so his dad is walking, mm -hmm. and then he sees Buddy sleeping in the store window, and he gets he wakes up and he gets all excited and. Yeah. He's like banging on the window and yelling at him. And he just walks right on by. <laughs> and then... He tries to give him a gift. He tries, because he yeah. has that... S tries to sneak in to give him that gift. A gift. and Security yeah, that guards was, catch him. That was like a big fat nope there. Yep. Um, then it's Santa. Santa is at the toy store. So you see how he decorated it amazing. Yeah, it's really good. And then Santa shows up, and it's not the real Santa. It's some guy in a beard and a coat. And it's not even a good beard. No, it's not. <laughs> and so he says that he's not Santa, 
And he's like, yes, I am. And they argue. And then he starts to make a scene. And he's like, well, if you're Santa, what song did I sing you on your birthday last year? Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> um, so there's this big fight because the fake Santa attacks Buddy. Well, Buddy ripped his beard off. Yeah. And, so and all the a- kids are, like, screaming and... They're like, ah, what's going on? And so he jumps away from them after that. And you see Walter opening the present that Buddy got for him. That's a special gift that's special somebody. Yeah, it's the lingerie. (laughs) It's just really funny. And there's a card with it, too, that Buddy made. Yeah, and it has the picture Mm -hmm. of him and uh, Susan in it and so he's like really kind of starting to believe that Buddy is actually his son now mm. just starting to believe it starting to and he gets a call from they get a call from the the jail saying that Buddy's in jail yep so Walter goes to get him and takes him to the doctor he's like to get a DNA test yep. done and so they took his blood and everything and then he's sitting out there in the waiting room talking to a little girl and she's She's funny. She's like, well, can you tell Santa this if you're really an elf? She's like, yeah. And then you see her a little bit later on in the end of the movie. And she actually gets what she had asked for. She's like, thanks, buddy. Well, it's on the list of what she had asked for. Mm -hmm. We don't know if she gets it because we only see Christmas Eve. Yeah. Um, So then he takes Buddy home with him. Mm -hmm. Because it is their father and son. They prove it. Which I didn't know that DNA tests were that fast. It's a movie. So. That's true. <laughs> but, um, then they're having dinner and. Spaghetti! Yes. Which I love spaghetti, but well, the maple syrup, that's a no for the me. The maple syrup and the spaghetti. That's a no for me. And so, what's her name? The wife. Emily. Emily, that's it. I forget their names. Because I don't write it down till later, so I can't find it. <laughs> Um, so, Emily's asking if he has somewhere to stay, and he doesn't, so she says that he can stay, and he wants to stay, and Walter's like, um, no, (laughs) he's delusional, and so he does stay. Yeah, he gets tucked in, too. Yes. He's like, Dad, I can't go to bed until I'm tucked in. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so he stays home the first day by himself. Yeah, he makes breakfast. Yes. Which is spaghetti. With maple syrup. With maple syrup. Yeah. Yeah. And he built a rocking horse from the TV stand. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, um, he just kind of spends the whole day, for the most part, by himself. Yep. And then he goes and meets his brother. Yes, he does. His other half-brother? Yeah, it's his half-brother. Michael. Yeah. And he was just following him home from school. And he kept bugging him. And then these kids start throwing snowballs at Mike. Yes. And, um, so him and Mike and Buddy start making snowballs. Buddy makes snowballs so fast. I mean, if you lived in, like, the North Pole, like, you're pretty much your entire life, I think you know how to make snowballs yeah. pretty quick. And then they start to get along. And, um, Buddy is saying how he really wants to get to know their dad, and Mike's like, well, why do you want to do that? He's not a great dad, and just saying all this, and Buddy's like, wow. (laughs) So amazed. (laughs) Um, then they go back to the department store. Yeah, they go to Gimbel's, yeah. Yeah, back to Gimbel's in the North Pole, and, um, Buddy is staring at Jovi. (laughs) And Mike was like, come on, let's, let's go do this. And Mike's giving him dating advice. <laughs> but Gimbal's has such a restraining order against Buddy. <laughs> so he's not supposed to be there. But Buddy does get a date. They have a date on Thursday. Yep, date on Thursday. Um, and then Mike and Buddy go pick a tree. They get a tree from the park. Yes. Which is not legal. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsies. Um... So, they are at home decorating the tree in the house, and then Walter and Emily discuss the tree. 
and it ends ends up staying. Yep. Um, then the next day, Buddy gets to go to work with Walter. Yes. And he gets coffee. He doesn't like coffee. Then, because Buddy keeps bugging him, he, he like answers the phone for him <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. And so he takes Buddy down to the mail room. Yes. And um, then we hear about a character called Miles Finch. He's a famous children's book author. Yeah, he comes up with ideas for children's books and stuff. But Buddy makes a new friend in the mail room. Yes, and this friend of his has a like a a flask, a flask of you know alcohol, and he's like, Buddy thinks it's maple syrup, yeah, and does. so he just pours the entire thing into his coffee. Yeah, and this drunk, drunk Buddy. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty pretty funny. And then um... dancing on a table yeah. and everything. I'm and... just trying to figure out what that said. <laughs> Yeah, they're dancing on the table, and there's a situation down in the mail room. And so, um, Miles agrees to come yeah. to them. And then it's Jovi and Buddy's date. And they're going around. He's like, she's like, well, what are we doing? He's like, a few things. And then he just, like, takes her around just, like, different things, like a crappy cup of coffee. Yeah. And then all looking at all the Christmas trees, and she takes them to the big one in uh, Rockefeller really? Center or Rockefeller Square. Yeah, and they're ice skating. Yep. And then it's the Miles meeting, the Miles Finch meeting, which I really like Peter Dinklage as an actor. I really <laughs> like him. He does such a great job in everything he's in. It's true. Um. So Buddy comes into the meeting. <laughs> And he continuously calls Miles an elf. He thinks he's an elf. It's like, nobody no. And Miles gets so mad, he like drop kicks him off the table. Yeah. And then Walter gets mad and like kicks him out. And tells his buddy to get out. He like, you get know. out of his life, get out of the place, like everything. It's like, aww. Sad. Yeah. But the guys that work for Walter find Miles' notebook, so they f finally have an idea. Yeah. For a book. And then Buddy is writing a goodbye note. And then With an edge sketch. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, it is. And then it's Christmas Eve, and there's a meeting with the board <coughs> at Walter's work. For a book pitch. Yeah. And Mike busts in about Buddy, how he's missing, like he's gone. Yes. And Walter, like, blows off his boss, who's like, I need to deal with this. And tells not, him not yet. Because at first, at first he's like telling his son, not not now. And it's like, son's after like, this, he's like, his son's like, you only care about yourself. Yeah. And then he, then his boss is telling his son to go away, and he's like, um, don't talk to my son like that. And then he blows off his boss. Yeah. And they like, go look for Buddy. He's like, later. And Buddy sees Santa crash. Yeah, he's on a bridge, which is kind of similar to his scene in It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. I noticed that. Um, so he goes to find Santa. He finds the engine, which he knows how to fix because Papa Elf, that was part of his responsibility, so he taught Buddy how to do it. Yep. Um, so Santa asks... Buddy for help. To fix his engine. Yep. And then there's a news report. <laughs> um, and Jovi sees that Buddy's just like wandering through the park. So she heads to the park. So pretty much everyone is at the park now. Wondering what's going on because they think there's... They don't really know what's going on. And like the news reports aren't clear. They just know something is happening and there's been a Santa sighting. Yeah. So Mike and Walter, they find Buddy. Mm-hmm. And Walter, Walter. apologizes yeah. to Buddy. He shows him Santa's sleigh and everything. Yeah. And then um, the park rangers, you see them, they're after Santa. They've been after Santa for a while. They're on the naughty list. Yeah. And um, 
Santa gives Mike his gift because Mike doesn't really believe, but he gives Santa, Santa gives him his gift and he, he starts to believe and the sleigh starts to fly a little bit because that's what makes a sleigh fly is belief. <laughs> Blush. <sighs> Thank you. And so they tell him about Christmas cheer and then Buddy comes up with a plan. <clears throat> Mike and Walter help him. So Mike runs and takes the nice and naughty list and goes to talk to the news people and he just reads off the list. Yeah. And the st- sleigh starts to fly more because people are re- are like, how does this kid know this? And then uh, Walter is dressed up as Santa and he's, he's like, distracting he, the park rangers. Like he took, he's like, I need to take, I need to borrow this. Yeah, he took his coat. He's like, well, Mrs. Claus made it for me. <laughs> and then Jovi, she sees what Mike is doing, and she's like, well, I know what Buddy told me, and he told me that best way to bring Christmas cheer is to sing loud for, for all to hear. Me. So she starts singing. Santa Claus is coming to town. Yep. In her beautiful singing voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she does sing really well. Um, so then everyone's starting to believe... And so Santa starts, like, the sleigh actually can fly now, and it's flying while Buddy's trying to fix the engine. <laughs> and then the engine gets knocked off by this fountain. Mm-hmm. And then um, they need a little bit more Christmas cheer, and they see that Walter's not really singing. He's just faking it. Yeah, so... He's, he's, and Mike's like, Dad, you need to sing. Yeah, <laughs> so he starts to sing. <laughs> It's like you met Santa. How can you not believe him? Yeah. And then we get the Hobbs family Christmas. Yep. And um, Jovi is there with Buddy, and they just have their Christmas dinner and everything. And then you see the elf book, which Buddy is reading. Yeah, it talks about how um, Walter started his own, you know, publishing company, yeah. and Buddy's book is the first one that he published. Yep. And he's reading it to people. I think it looks like he's reading it at Gimbel's at the North Pole. I think so. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> and so then the next thing you see is Buddy and Jovi have a baby, and they're up at the North Pole visiting Papa Elf. Yes. And their daughter's named Susie. Yes. Named after Buddy's mom. Yeah. And that's it. I was like, very end. I like the end part. It says, because so Papa Elf wants to hold Susie, oh, yeah. but Buddy's holding her, so he go, Buddy goes, sits on Papa Elf's lap yeah, he with Susie. And I'm like, funny. yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's <laughs> really funny. But yeah, that's it. Wow, yeah, that's Elf. So, music, um, John Debney is credited for this. Um... He was born August 18th of 1956. He was nominated for an Oscar, has 32 other awards, and 23 other nominations. He's known for The Jungle Book um, from 2016. He was the conductor. See, this is where I put oh, what okay. they were credited for and like what they were known for and why. Uh, the Greatest Showman from 2017. He was the conductor for that. Nice. The Passion of the Christ from 2004. He was a soundtrack producer. And then Iron Man 2 from 2010, he played the guitar for that. Nice. He was the guitar soloist for that. So yeah, those are some things that he's known for and what he's done. He's done quite a bit. He's done a lot. So there's not really anything to compare it to. Not really. Um, I'm going to go into the trivia. It, there is a Broadway musical. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it. I don't know much about it. I really don't. Mm-hmm. That's one of those musicals I have not seen or heard yet. Gotcha. Yet. There's a yet there. <laughs> yeah. or I'll get around to it. So it was turned into a musical um, which ran from November 2010 to January of 2011. So mm-hmm. not very long, actually. Like three months. Yeah. It didn't last long on Broadway. No. But it still does, like, you know, community shows can put it on or anything. That's cool. Let's see. Let's Seems see. like it would be a good musical. I think so. I haven't seen it yet, though. And I got one more. So, I kept these short for the events. <laughs> so, Will Ferrell actually, he suffered headaches because he was actually eating all the sugary stuff. Oh my god. And the food pyramid. The elf food pyramid. You know, candy. Candy, candy canes. 
candy corn and syrup. Yep, syrup. <laughs> I love how we both know that. Yeah, it's sad yeah. that we both know that. <laughs> so, it's a very quotable movie, like I is, said earlier. <coughs> Favorite line. Oh, you crap. There's go, a bunch of them. There, Where do I want to start? You want to pick a few first, and then I'll say uh, mine, and then you get to pick since it's your movie. Okay. God. Okay, this one made me laugh. I, I've forgotten about this line. So he's talking about, like, talking with Jovi early in the movie about singing. And she, he's like, it's just like talking, except longer and louder. And you move your voice up and down. And I'm like, that's pretty much what singing is. Yeah. Um. Buddy says to his dad, he's like, I can't go to sleep unless I get tucked in. Yeah. Um, Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? Oh, when he answers the phone. Yes. I love that line. I have answered the, the phone that way before. The sad that I know when that happened. I've used that on the phone before, too. That's funny. I use it with my brothers a lot. And they're like, ugh, really? And then three more. Okay. So, he's an angry elf. <laughs> He must be from the South Pole. <laughs> Classic. Or he must be a South Pole elf. Uh, you sit on a throne of lies. Oh, yeah. It's Classic. To Santa. And this one is Santa's line. Christmas spirit is about, is not, is about believing, not seeing. Yeah. Yeah, I have a few. Um, maybe by next Christmas you'll have a home. Which, oh. I mean, it's true. He does. Next Christmas, he has a home. Yeah. I mean, she's right. Um, my favorite one, I say it all the time. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Mr. Narwhal. Yes, I love it. Um, let's see. I'm a hu human. I was raised by elves. Oh, I'm a human. Raised by humans. <laughs> uh... Great, I got a full 40 minutes. I would die. 40 minutes of sleep, I would die. <laughs> oh my die. god. I suffer Oops. with like a few hours. Um, this one is a really funny one. Uh, this is my last one because you took the, the South Pole elf one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, why don't we just pull him out of school and let the deranged elf man raise him? <laughs> Yeah, these are some good ones. This yeah. is hard. You gotta pick it. I know. Uh, this is Linger's crap. <laughs> do I go with sentimental or do I go with funny? I think with this one, funny is think it's funny. a comedy. So. I think I should do funny. Oh god, this is tough. I have to limit it down to two that I like. Maybe you can help me. So you sit on the throne of lies, or butted the elf. What's your favorite color? I, I really like the You Sit on a Throne of Lies. I think so. That one is hilarious. As good as Buddy the Elf, What's Your Favorite Color is, I think You Sit on a Throne of Lies is much better. Alright. I like it. So our rating... I have an 8. An 8? Okay. Yes. I love this movie. I watch it. Not just... And I will admit, I'm not a huge Christmas person. Yeah. I just... It's not my favorite. But I will watch this movie... Any time of the year. Any time. I've watched it in April. <laughs> I've watched it in August. It just doesn't matter. If it's on, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. It's just a good movie. It is a good movie. Um, I give it a 7. Um, I do enjoy this movie. Some of the CGI doesn't quite stand up for me. I mean, it's early 2000. 2000s movie, so it's 15 years old at this point. It um, is. Yeah. That's, I think that's probably why they're showing it I in theaters so. right now, because yeah. it's the 15th anniversary. Um, and also, it's a comedy, so I'm not that, that big on comedies. For you. It does take points that it is a comedy, but it's actually one of the very few comedies that I actually like. And I'm not a big fan of Will Ferrell, but he does a really good job in this. I don't think there's anybody else that could do this. No. No one else can. But yeah, I gave it a 7. So, our next one for our Christmas event is Gremlins, which is one of my favorites. Yep. 
So we will see you in just a few for that one. Bye. Bye-bye.